All right, guys, welcome back to Amazon PSU. Today we are undervolting this Ryzen 5 5600X. So let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is actually go into your BIOS. To do that, you just need to spam the delete key on your keyboard. You just spam it when your PC is booting, but you have many guides for that online. Now, once in your BIOS, you want to go on the advanced mode. Now, on my motherboard, which is an ASUS TUF B550F, uh, you do it by hitting F6, but on certain motherboards, you need to hit F7, okay? But in certain motherboards it's f6 or f5 but so you want to go on, on advanced mode and then you want to look for ai tweaker or overclocking or tuning or something like that it depends on the motherboard now once you're here you want to go over here on the it lets you select what kind of overclocking options you want to now you want to put either manual or docp now on my motherboard, you want to put DOCP because this will enable your XMP profile, which will make your RAM run at its full speed. So first off, do that. Let's get into the actual tutorial. Okay, you want to go down here until you find CPU core ratio. Now right here, you want to put 40. You want to go all the way down until you find something like CPU voltage or CPU vCore. You want to go here, hit enter and select manual. Now, over here on uh, CPU voltage override, which is basically the CPU voltage, it will just open a window for you. You want to hit 1.025. Now you hit F10 on your keyboard, and then you hit enter, and the tutorial is basically finished. Now, I will just show you quickly the thing running. Okay, guys, so now we are into Windows, and while I show you how to test if your undervolt is stable, we will discuss a bit why you should do this and how you can improve it a little bit. So if you wanna just copy it, the tutorial is over. You can just copy that settings and it's done. But if you wanna learn more, I really appreciate this thing. So to really check that it's working, you will need CPU-Z. You just open CPU-Z and you can check if it is running at the frequency and voltage that you want. So right here, it says X40, four gigahertz. So this is correct. And then right here, it says one volt. So this is correct as well. It has to be approximately one volt, obviously. So to really check if it's stable, you will need two programs. You will need hardware monitor. This is just to check your temperature, but you will need Prime 95. You need to open it and to select small FFTs right here and then hit OK. If your PC crashes or shuts itself off, then it wasn't stable and you have to add 0 0.025, okay? So if you had 1.025 as I told you and this crashes, you have to put 1.05. And if it still crashes, you have to put 1.075, okay? 99.9% .9 of CPUs will be fine with 1.00. And that's it. My CPU right now is running with 1.00 volt actually, and it's perfectly stable. Nothing is crashing. And this gives us very little power consumption. As a matter of fact, I will actually show you what my power consumption is. And it's basically 90 watts, which is very little for the Ryzen CPU with a six core and 12 threads. So this is it guys. Let me know if you liked it. Again, you can just copy the initial setting and just be done with it. And see you in the next one guys. Bye. So guys, something else that I wanted to say is that this tutorial will actually be the same for every 6 core, 12 threads, 5th gen Ryzen. So this will work for Ryzen 5 5500 and it will work for Ryzen 5 5600 and for the 5600X like we have in the video. It will also work for the Ryzen 5 5600G, the one with the integrated graphics. So just feel free to copy it again, 4 gigahertz and one volt again to be sure 1.025 volt but one volt will be fine for pretty much everyone just those two settings your pc will change uh, you will actually lose a little bit in single thread but you will improve your latency because the, the, the cpu will stop going up and down up and down up and down and it will just stay flat at four gigahertz so it's a bit better in my opinion it increase dramatically your performance in multi-core because the cpu will run cooler and so it will be able to sustain the turbo boost longer so you really should do this yeah i think this is how you should run your cpu so do it and let me know if it was helpful bye